Hey there! In the last tutorial I showed you how to install Apache on your Raspberry Pi and we were able to access a, just a generic HTML file from a remote computer uh, pretty easily. In today's tutorial I want to show you how to install Flask on your Raspberry Pi. Flask is can be seen as a like a back-end web server uh, but Flask uh, they define themselves as a micro framework for Python uh, making it easier for you to build web applications using Python and it's, it's pretty cool I only started playing with it there are other frameworks that you can use including Django and, uh, and many others that I, I have no idea about so I thought I'd take a few minutes and show you how to install Flask so that we can in, in future tutorials, we can set our, our, our backend API endpoints, if you will, for our lights applications or, or whatever other application that you want to do. So I'm going to take you through the steps now. So if you are familiar with uh, like MBC frameworks, uh, Flask is pretty similar because you can set a controller and, and route your users to different things. Uh, we're not going to be playing with databases, so uh, not a lot of models, but we'll be working with a uh, little bit of views. So the first thing you'd want to do is we want to install a, a virtual environment. So we'll do apt, sudo apt install python3 venv, which is the, the virtual environment for python3. The reason we're doing this is because we want to install Flask in our in a virtual in, in a uh, container in our within our Raspberry Pi this allows us to ensure that if anything goes wrong we're not we're not reinstalling everything in the Raspberry Pi but we're just containing it to that one little virtual environment since I already have it installed it only took like a few seconds to tell me that you know it's it already exists I can do auto remove to remove it but I don't want to do that so it can take you a few minutes to install it so don't, don't mind this part so the next thing we want to do is we actually want to go to our www folder which has our html folder here which uh, in our last tutorial we created uh, an index file i call it a new old index now i renamed it since our, our last video and i'm going to actually have our fast app server here instead of anywhere else in the in our pi so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a folder so i'll do sudo make dir uh, i'll call it um, our pi let's just call it pi app there we go, we have our Pi app folder. Uh, next we want to do is let's go into our Pi app folder and we will do uh, Python 3 M VNV VNV. So the steps here, if you're wondering where I'm getting these, these are from the Flask documentation. Uh, the documentation is pretty good, but I have run into uh, quite a few errors running through these. So the tutorial I'm showing you today is just variations, what you, what you see here, as well as the problems that I've faced. So the, the Python 3, we're executing uh, our virtual environment and creating a new folder called venv. We can technically call this anything we want, like in blah, 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 but I'll call, I'll call it venv just uh, to keep it simple. And this will take uh, a minute or so. So you can see that it said that I got permission to die. So you need to do sudo Python 3 and let's give it a, a minute and it will download all of the virtual environment dependencies and put it in our Pi app folder. Currently it's empty, so and uh, in a minute when this has completed, we will see a VENV folder. So there we go, uh, it, it finished, so I'm, I'm just gonna clear this and I'll do list, and we can see there's a VENV folder. If you wanna go in and, and see what's in there, you can do this, there's a, there's a bin include lib, blah, blah, blah. And inside the bin folder, there are uh, a couple of different Files, including activate, which we will be using in our next uh, in our next command, which is we'll do then uh, the dot is for the, the source directory, the bin activate, and what this will do is it'll activate our uh, virtual environment, but it won't work. Well, actually, it, it did work. Normally, it would ask me to uh, do sudo n, but I guess it didn't this time. And there we go. You can see that there's a venv uh, prefix here and it means that we are in our current virtual environment. If you want to get out of it, you just do deactivate and it takes you out of the, the virtual environment folder. So we do this. Do um, stat vnv just to see who owns it. It owns its own by root and then I will run this again and we are in our virtual environment. So anything we do now it will, ha will only happen in our virtual environment and will not install anything globally. Next we want to do is we want to install Flask. We'll do pip install Flask 
and this will take uh, a few minutes to grab all of the Flask source files and install it into our virtual environment only. And again, since this is a, a virtual environment, everything that we're installing now is contained to this environment and will not affect anything else that's happening on the Pi. So if you want to redo everything, we can just RM, RF, and delete this folder and restart. So uh, this kind of finished and it says there's permission denied. And that's because, uh, so I was expecting to run into this error in uh, previously when I activated, uh, but I didn't. So that's my alarm. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of, I'm gonna get out of, uh, whoops. Deactivate, spelled it wrong, not deactive. Um, I'll do list, I'll do stat venv. So we can see that it's uh, currently owned by root. So we're going to do, uh, we'll do sudo shown, or ch own, r for recursive, it, it changes the permissions for every file and folder underneath. And we'll do pi, pi, the pi user, the pi group, and we'll do venv. And now if we do stat again, we'll see that it's now owned by pi. Now we'll just repeat a couple of steps. Activate and just clear this. Clear and let's run our pip install flask one more time. So it went better this time. So it says, you know, successfully installed, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you list anything, nothing is installed here. It's just installed in our virtual environment here. So what we want to do now is create a Python file that we want to access from our browser. So we'll do sudo nano, let's call it hello.py. I'll be following the, the quick start example that is on the Flask documentation site because we don't really need anything more. So just paste it here, hello world, which is just saying once you get to the root of this document, uh, of this web application, it'll just display hello world. Uh, I'll do like, you know, welcome to easyprogramming.net. So you can see that I'm actually making edits to this. So I'll save this, control X. And what we, next thing I wanna do is I want to uh, run this Flask application. I'm going to do something uh, incorrectly at first just to show you the error that you get. So we'll do flask run and flask will try and run this application but uh, I skipped a step. I, I didn't tell flask like what the application is, what we want to run it and it just says could not locate flask application. You did not provide the flask app variable. So um, th that information is here. It says export flask app hello.py. So we'll just do export flask app equals to hello.py. So it's we need to export this little variable here uh, in this Flask app variable telling it what file to run, what is our main Python file. So now if I do this, and now if I run Flask run, it will run. Let's give it a minute. Uh, I also left something else on purpose. So it says Flask app is running, you know, hello.py. Uh, Environment is production, you know, but it says do not use development servers in a production environment, which uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do in the next tutorial. And it's running on 127.0.0.1 uh, colon 5000. That's the port that's running on. If I try to run, access that in our here, it will not work because I can't access it. It's only running locally. So if I were accessing a web browser from the Pi, it would work. So the here. So, so the thing to do here is you send in a, a, a special argument here. We'll call it host equals to 0.0.0.0. .0 and we're telling Flask, when, when you give this command to Flask, it's telling it to make it public so that anyone who can access the our Raspberry Pi's IP address can access this Flask application. Now, if I run this, it'll say in running on 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 you know, a colon 5000. And now if I go back here, now if I refresh this, there you go, it's running, hello world, welcome to easyprogramming.net. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And now every time I refresh this, you can see that there's an entry here because it's an app, application server and it's, and it's recording all the requests that are happening and these are all get requests. If you are familiar with uh, 
flask you can skip this part where I'll just show you how to create another view really quickly so we'll do app.route we'll do um, let's do tutorial def right my tutorial and we'll do return uh, put your tutorials here here no 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 semicolon I just don't get used to that um, if I go here without saving it, if I do, you know, my tutorials, it won't work. Or my tutorial, right? Or tutorial will not work. But if I save this and I rerun Flask, of course, you know, Flask wasn't running, so that wouldn't have worked anyway. So if I rerun this, let it load, blah, blah, blah. Takes, uh, takes a few seconds and it's running. If I do refresh, there you go, put your tutorials here. Now we created two different pages. We have a home page and a, and a tutorials page, which uh, we can you know, set navigations for and access as tutorial. Access um, from other, other computers uh, on my network. And if I were to open this up to the World Wide Web, I can do that as well. Uh, but that's currently not available. So I hope you've learned a little bit about uh, running a Flask application, uh, running Flask on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, yeah, this message here says, you know, do not use development server for in a production environment. So the reason is that if I were to create a JavaScript file and request something from this URL, it would still need me to require course, which you've seen in my jQuery videos and my Ajax videos. And that's because to our browser, a 192.168.1.196 is very different from 192.168.1.196 colon 5000. These are two different webs websites to our browser and it would treat them as two different websites. So in our next tutorial, I'll show you how to install Flask behind Apache or put Apache in front of Flask so that you can actually go to uh, like 192.168, blah, blah, blah. We'll do another tutorials and it will send us to our Flask application without us having to run this application server whenever our Pi is on, uh, if, the, if that makes sense. So that one should be fairly quick as well. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've learned something. Please feel free to ask any questions below and remember to visit easyprogramming.net for more for more tutorials. If you want to see something covered, uh, let me know as well. I'm always happy to look into more topics. Have a great one.